it's a razor thin line between the Corn Ferry Tour and the PGA Tour. More than half of these guys out here can be competing on the PGA Tour week in and week out. The talent is that good, the talent and the depth of golf is that strong. Whenever you get hot, just, just don't let up. You just gotta keep your foot on the gas. It's that time of year, so much at stake. It's all kind of adds to the excitement to take care of a lifelong dream that you know I've had since I was probably like five years old. We see that raw emotion every week. And because this tour is life-changing every week. I always describe this tour, the Corn Free Tour, as a next generation of champions. To me, what's great about this tour, it's just about the golf. Uh, and it's more about just the raw competition. You've got people at very, very different times of their career. And to me, the, the most compelling stories are those guys that have just toiled. My name first or no? Yeah. Okay. If I say something dumb or if I mess up, I know. <laughs> We're rolling? Oh, wow. Okay. All right. I'm Chad Ramey. This is my fourth year on the Corn Ferry Tour, and I'm currently number three on the points list. I'm Max McGreevy. I've been on the Corn Ferry Tour for three years now, and I'm 15th on the points list. My name's Austin Smotherman, and I've been on the Corn Ferry Tour for three years now. Currently, I am in the 25th spot for the uh, regular season standings, so if you told me that at the start of the year, I would, I would take it in a heartbeat. It's a unique season, obviously, with the COVID pandemic. There was a 13-week hiatus. Generally, it's 23 or 25 or 27. This year with 43 events, you've got to win, and then you've got to try and win again, or you've got to have a number of top fives just to squeeze into that top 25. The deal is, if you finish in the top 25 in the regular season, you're guaranteed a PGA Tour card. Just two weeks left in the regular season till 25 lucky players get their PGA Tour card. Proudly give it a couple to give it a come to end this huge wraparound. Austin Smotherman had it going his first night. If the putter behaves, he could win for the second time in this massive season. I feel like my swing's changed a little bit. My ball striking's continually gotten better. I can kind of kind of get by and still have some good finishes and, and contend and compete. It just comes down to staying in the present and actually doing it day in and day out and just letting it unfold the way it's going to unfold. We are on the road so much. It's crazy out here when you can kind of step back and you don't have to be somewhere at, you know, this time and be done by this time and go there. You know what? I'm going to enjoy those moments in between. We are pulling into Park City, Utah. Uh, going to go check out the mountain resort and see what activities they got for us. Um, they got a mountain roller coaster. Some alpine slides. Should be fun. All right, guys. Good luck. <laughs> Last one down the hill is a rotten egg. All right. Oh, you're going down. These slides are going to be us in about, I don't know, maybe five minutes, depending on how fast this gondola goes. But uh, here we are. Everybody say hi. Hi. The opportunity to see places you would have never gone otherwise, and golf is what brought us there, and it's pretty amazing. You get to see a lot of cool spots.
That was sick. With Austin, what's so great about him is when the putter is where it needs to be, it's not top 10s and top 15s, it's top 5s and, and chances to win. That week just felt like it was it was my week, and we had a, a moment on the 18th green. Jess is right there jumping, full-on bear hug. I squeezed her so hard and uh, just walked kind of arm-in-arm arm all the way up to the clubhouse, signed that scorecard, and made it official. Having a husband on the bubble or being bubble boy, I mean, at the end of the day, his mindset and motivation doesn't change. The whole season, you know, coming down to the last two events, I feel like I've kept the perspective from the very first week. It's a marathon, it's not a race. And you know what, we're here to, to finish the marathon. You have to accept that it's gonna be difficult, accept that the press is gonna be intoxicating and go out and see how you deal with it. I felt confident, we're just going out there doing what we're doing and um, there's no reason why we, why we can't do that any week and when it doesn't happen, it's just about having the patience knowing that they're gonna, they're gonna come at some point. I'm trying to keep everything as consistently good as possible. So whenever I do go out on the golf course and I don't hit my driver as well that day and I get in some trouble that my wedge and my putter's there to kind of pull me out. And then, you know, vice versa, when one part's off, the rest of them can pick it back up. There's definitely an art to traveling every week. You know, you kind of get in your set routines. And Tuesdays, I like to get up really early and kind of, you know, beat the crowd, get out there, um, play nine holes, do a little practice after. Being out here so many weeks in a row, it's just you kind of figure out what that routine is and you just kind of stick to it. So today I'm going to hit a few wedges because we're actually here a little early. I didn't know the course didn't open until 7, so I'm going to hit a few. Let's make sure I'm loose and we'll get out on the course. This year for Chad, it's been the most incredible season of consistency. Missed three cuts in 38 events. Keep building that momentum so then when you, are, when you do start playing well, you, you cash it in. ton of self-belief throughout this whole process and to finally get my first professional win. I mean, it was probably the biggest relief, you know, I've ever had. He's been a pro for eight years in Maine. The last time he won was in college at Mississippi State. So there's that ultimate validation. My mom and my dad and my fiance and then another couple that are family friends were all up there. It's a moment I'll never forget, that's for sure. Dang, that one tree, they lost it. Oh, that the makes, biggest one closest to the corner. I feel like that makes this hole completely different. As we sit here in Utah, knowing that Steven Yeager is not here and Mito Pereira is not here, Chad is the highest guy on the points list to play, and he's looking for that number one spot. That number one spot is a huge, huge golden ticket, we call it, because then he'll become one of those fully exempt players, which means he'll get into the Players' Championship. That is something I'm 100% striving for because, you know, I'd love to get to that number one spot and just, you know, get that the best status I can get out there for next year. I felt good today. I, I hit the ball a lot better. You know, the putter was rolling good. So it was just nice to, you know, start making some birdies and kind of get things going a little bit. I'd say I'm very gritty, um, aggressive at times. I just kind of either will it in or find a way to kind of get it done. I feel like weekend golf is what I always kind of look forward to. I kind of thrive on that a little bit, so I can kind of just put the pedal to the, to the floor and kind of get it going here on Saturday and Sunday. We've got 36 holes this weekend and the final regular season event next week. It's a lot of pressure building. Oak Ridge is 
short by today's standards. It's only 7,100 yards, so you know you've got to make a lot of birdies. It's a course that's set up for scoring. We've got drivable par fours, we've got par fives that people can reach with short time, so there's eagles flying around left, right, and center. I love the weekend. It's just, I don't know what it is about it, it just kind of gets me going. And, um, you know, my thing always is to be uh, the lowest 36 hole score for the weekend. That's always my big deal. Definitely got to hit some good shots out there. There's some birdie chances for sure if you're hitting some good drivers. Kid that played his college golf at Oklahoma. A lot of Sooners out here as well. Are they all still living together? No. Charlie moved out. Oh, I got married. Got married. Yeah. Congrats. Thanks. Congrats. <laughs> you, get, you get married, you get married, and then you get out of it. I took my visit to Oklahoma, and I didn't really know anything about the program. I didn't know anything about Coach Hibble. And I remember sitting down with him in that first meeting, and I, f I fell in love with him. I felt like it was just the spot where I needed to be, and that's, you know, the main reason I got better and was able to kind of pursue this dream after school. We were a very close-knit team. Charlie and I maybe not so much <laughs> because we butted heads in college a little bit, but I think I have for sure grown up a little bit, and we've definitely gotten closer over the years, for yeah. sure. No, yeah. it's, taken, it's taken me a couple years, for <laughs> sure. He came out here as a rookie in 2018 and had very little success. And one of his good friends, Charlie Saxon, who had gone over to PGA Tour China and had phenomenal success over there, sort of empowered Max to go. And he went over there in 2019 and was player of the year. He gained the confidence from the success in China. How about a chunk push? Hirsch, we need a, a Max Charles memory. Hey, you got anything? College? Yeah. Or just in general. I can think of a lot of bad ones that Ma need to be Ma happy. Yeah, <laughs> Max just keeps talking about how we used to fight all the time. Oh, well, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Omaha. Like Hershey's, are you? I don't even know. I don't know if we have like the same kind of personalities or we're both kind of like just fiery a little bit. Yeah. We just, I think each of us would get on each other's nerves just a little bit. I loved watching Charles's work ethic because he's like one of the hardest workers I've ever watched in my life. and. Being able to live with him and being around that, that's great too. So Jammer, mm. we're good buddies and we, we'll get on each other nearly there now again, but it's it's uh, it's pushed us. Like, I mean, I, I don't want to lose to him, he don't want to lose to me, but at the same time, we'll rally behind each other and yeah. encourage each other uh, when, when each other are playing good golf. It's been awesome seeing Max kill it this year and uh, looking forward to seeing him on the tour next year and shoot, maybe I can yeah, join I'm, him. I'm, hoping, I'm hoping I can have Charles up there with yeah. me and we can both go dominate. Max McGreevy playing well with the 64 of his own. I've shot 11 under par on the front nine so far this week, so it's got to kind of get it um, a little better on the back nine. I think, uh, you know, I might give myself a chance tomorrow. That was a little bit of a struggle. I mean, I got off to a good start, um, had a little bit of momentum, but just hit a few bad shots out there and kind of got out of position and just couldn't get anything going. Oddly enough, I still feel like my game's in a really good position. You just gotta kind of stick to the process and you know just keep doing what I'm doing. We know we can execute on this golf course when we've had good front front sides and we've had good back sides. To finish with a birdie was was huge. Austin Smotherman, who was the bubble man coming into the week at 25th, T12 right now. Very pleased getting around in 600 today. Ball striking the way I am, stay committed like we kind of know I need to be to put the swings on it that I that I have inside. Don't press, don't get too uh, too anxious. Thank you. We'll I see appreciate you guys tomorrow. Your time. Yeah. The truck is the operations truck that travels week in and week out. You also have Great White, which Great White is one of the most prized possessions of the truck. Uh, week in and week out, it is filled with some local beverages. You talk about this tour being a family, I mean, they are the parents of it. 
final round of the Utah Championship and temperatures are rising and the pressure will be peaking for these final 18 holes. It was just all together, just a really solid round. Got off to a slow start this week, but you know, all in all, you know, I got in some good practice here, um, kind of turned it around here at the end and, you know, go into Omaha with a little bit of momentum. Played solid, learned a little bit of uh, my tendencies today. I mean, just to grind and make some pars. And then we had uh, a bunch of 20 footers with wedges all day. And so it's just one of those weeks that you need a little bit more. And he's gonna be the extending life on the bubble to the regular season finale. Can't be too displeased. I mean, shooting 15 under, I mean, going to next week, you know, wanting to win and doing what we can to win. That's the plan. I worked really hard on my wedges this week. It just made me just more comfortable player, I feel like, the entire week, which is ultimately what I want every single week. Got off to the start he wanted, but just even par on this back nine stalled any sort of momentum. Still a good week inside the top 15. Can't be too disappointed shooting 18 under par. I mean, made a lot of birdies and whatnot. Unfortunately, everyone just went a lot lower than me this week. of his career, I promise you. Special moment that he'll probably remember the rest of his career. We got Josh pretty good. I mean, me and him are pretty good friends. I followed him the entire back nine, and me and about five or six other guys, you know, kind of decided, you know, if he pulls this thing out, we're going to get him. And sure enough, as soon as it was official, it was over. We're so happy to have our champion and friend, Josh Creel. So what we got to do is sign Greg White, then you can sign anywhere you want. <laughs> the great thing about this tour, there's this camaraderie, there's this fellowship. They eat together, they drink together, and it, it just provides that that bonding, that sort of bond, band of brothers type attitude of, you know, we're, we're in this together. Thanks for watching. See you on the PJ Tour.